Today I'm going to step you through one of the most valuable documents I think that we produce in Patrick, and that's the uh, Comprehensive Genome Analysis Report that is constructed as part of the Comprehensive Genome Analysis Service. So you submitted your job, and let's look at this report. The first thing is how do I find that job? Well, you could go here and click on the jobs monitor and that would take you to your jobs page. Or you could go up into the workspaces, click on the down arrow and click on my jobs. This will overwrite the page and it'll show all the jobs you've ever submitted in Patrick. It's, it's brutal with its results because it'll show you the jobs that failed as well as the ones that are succeeding. And it'll also give you a status update on jobs that are currently running. So I want to look at the results for a particular job. So I highlight the row and you notice that this populates this vertical green bar to the right with possible downstream functions. I want to click the view icon. Now in subsequent videos I'll talk about each of these documents that is part of this job and we'll also go into detail on the annotation job and the assembly job. But today, we want to see my favorite, which is the full genome report, HTML. So I highlight that. I can download it or I can view it. So let's click the view. And it once again overwrites the page at top. At the top, it shows me a breadcrumb of where I am. You never get lost in Patrick gives you another opportunity to download the job. This gives me a summary of the entire job. It tells me that I submitted the jobs to the service and notice this here, which will give you links at the bottom of this document to the references. When we constructed this, we want to make it as easy for you to publish. So sometimes the way I envision these things is giving you information that you can put directly into a materials and methods section or something like that in Patrick. So this gives you the reference that you can use. And please, if you, it's a free service. If you use it, please cite us. It helps us continue to keep providing you with these services. So here's, uh, you submitted it to Patrick, and this is the most valuable part. This genome appears to be of good quality. We found that a lot of our users weren't um, able to interpret it when they would submit an assembly and then an annotation and then do a tree and maybe they would do some analysis with a protein uh, comparison tool or the protein family sorter. And we realized it was taking them a long time to figure out if they needed to do some more work with this genome. So we decided to put it straight up front. This genome appears to be of good quality or it'll tell you if it's of poor quality. It gives you this, I submitted um, reads for the assembly. It tells me that CANU, um, well, this, this is what I called the job, was assembled using CANU. And that will take me to the reference for that. So that's very easy for you when you're writing your publication. For context, and this is the size. So these are some of the statistics that you can use when you are submitting um, information or creating a, a publication for a particular genome. It gives you information about the annotation. Now, if you provided uh, a, a genus and species name, it will give you the breadcrumb for the taxonomic tree for this organism. And then it goes into the detail about the annotated genes, how many coding sequences there were, how many repeat regions they found, how many tRNAs, how many rRNAs, all the information there. And then we break it down further to show you how many hypothetical proteins, how many proteins that had functional assignments, which is basically any name that isn't really hypothetical. Proteins with EC numbers, which is enzyme commission numbers, which indicates that they have a specific activity. Um, 
proteins with GO assignments for gene ontology, proteins that we could assign to pathways, and also the proteins that could be mapped to the genus specifics families, which are the PL fams, or the cross genus families, which are the PG fams. Now this is a circular view of all the annotations in the genome, and each of these rings has a bit of different information. I'm gonna shrink, tighten this up so you can see it better. Outside this dark blue ring, this is an indication of how many contigs, and we know that there are four in this genome. So there's one big one, and there are three small ones. Um, having looked at the, this organism previously, I know that this is a Staph aureus genome that had was done with PAC biosequencing. So it's got one chromosome and three plasmids. So you're seeing the three plasmids here. The next circle in are the genes on the forward strand. The next one are the genes on the reverse strand. And this is, to, you don't have to remember, it's showing you the order of these things right here. The third one, are the RNA genes, which include the ribosomal RNA genes and the tRNA genes. These are hits to virulence factors. Any genome annotated in Patrick is blasted against specific databases for virulence factors, for antimicrobial resistance genes, for trans transposons, for drug targets and human homologs. In this view, we only show you the virulence factors here and the um, antimicrobial resistance genes here. And then the last two ones are GC content and GC skew. Why would you wanna see that? Because sometimes they're an indication of horizontal trap transfer between um, different organisms. When you see uh, yeah, a change, a significant, a significant change in the GC content, like it is indicated here and here, that's an indication of a potential area that might have come in by horizontal transfer. Now you notice that some of these genes are colored. What do the colors mean? If you go down, we have a specific thing that we do at Patrick and also at RAST, which is doing a subsystem analysis where we have curators who are trying to group together genes that are known to have a specific function by particular classes. So if these genes are blue, it's an indication that they're involved in metabolism. If they're orange, it's an indication that they're involved in protein processing. It's just a way for you to see how things are distributed across the organism. Uh, earlier, I told you that we blast against specific databases, transporters, virulence factors, drug targets, and antibiotic resistance genes. The citations for those are provided here. And this shows you the number of genes that this particular organism had that had significant blast hits when it was blasted against CARD or NDARO or the Patrick antimicrobial resistance genes, et cetera. Another thing that we do in Patrick for specific organisms where we have enough data, we've done a machine learning event, uh, a machine learning process to try to identify specific regions of the genome that are indicative of susceptibility or resistant, resistance to antibiotics. Staphylococcus aureus is one of those genomes that we have a lot of data on and that we were able to run this machine learning process on. And so when, this, when any genome of that genus and species is annotated in Patrick, we look at that data and try to see if it has any of those classifiers that we identified with that. And you can see that um, we, that this particular genome, it has indications of being resistant to penicillin and susceptible to a number of antibiotics. So that's a pretty good service for, um, a pretty useful service for some organisms that we have in Patrick. 
as antimicrobial resistance is very important to NIAD and it's becoming of global importance. Um, we have a KMER based antimicrobial genes detection method that's, that, were, that are blasted against them. And these are genes that were found in my particular genome that might be conferring resistant to specific antibiotics. And then the last thing we do is we go through, when you submit a genome to Patrick, it looks for across the uh, reference and NIAD reference and representative genomes to see if it can find some close relatives to give you an indication of where that genome is in the great scheme of bacterial life. So we have, uh, we go in and identify the closest reference and representative genomes by MASH MinHash, and here's the citation for it. And then we gather all the global protein families, which are the cross genus families, and we use five of those to generate a phylogenetic tree. Now in Patrick, we use our phylogenetic tree pipeline, which takes the amino acids and the nucleotide sequences for both of those. It um, concatenates them to together in an alignment, um, and then this alignment is used to build the tree. And here's the tree here. And here are the support values for that tree. This is only on five genes. You should try to use more than that. If you're going to publish on this genome and publish a phylogenetic tree, you should do a more robust analysis of the phylogeny rather than just five genes. I look at every paper that cites Patrick and I tweet about it and Facebook about it, so you should, so you should cite us because I try to publicize your, your data. And when I see someone using these particular trees because I know what they look like and I'm like, oh no, please do a more robust analysis. Here are the references that are included up in the um, information above. So this is a very useful report and the main things it gives you is some indication of the quality of your genome and where it rests on the grand scheme of things. Now in the subsequent videos, we'll look more at the different files that come with it, come with the comprehensive genome analysis job, and then we'll explore what that genome looks like when it's in Patrick. Thanks for joining. Bye.